So you are a developer, or in my case, a tester, and you're starting to realize that you're spending more time explaining why you do the job a certain way than doing the job itself. Maybe you're explaining the principles of clean code, or you're explaining why there's no golden number for response time across all industries. At some point, you may begin to wonder, is being a pure developer or tester the best way that I can provide value? In my case, the answer was no. And that's how I found developer advocacy. In this video, I'm going to tell you what developer advocacy is and show you a week in my life. I work as a developer advocate at Grafana Labs, specifically the K6 team. K6 is both an open source load testing tool and a load testing SaaS platform. My job title is developer advocate, but I think a more accurate job title would be performance testing advocate or something like that because I'm primarily a tester, not a developer. And my job is to advocate to and for testers and in particular performance testers. Developer advocates are sometimes called DevRel, which is developer relations. And there are three main pillars that I can see, although different DevRels have different mixes. So you typically would have all three of these pillars covered, but depending on your personal interests or experience, you might cover one more heavily than the other. The first is content. The content pillar is all about advocating to the target audience, for K6 that's developers and testers, and making sure that they know how to use K6. So that could be demonstrating how K6 works in the form of a blog post or documentation or a video. And that could also mean like what I'm working on now. I'm trying to get together a workshop that will be more of a guided experience for how to use K6 and how to run a load test in general. The community pillar is all about being part of the same groups that your users are in. So the main difference between developer advocacy and marketing is that developer advocates are actually doing the job, have a lot of experience in doing the job, and so their primary goal is not to sell. It's to participate in discussions just like any other community member. So it comes from a very, a much more hands-on place than a marketer would because a marketer is kind of on the outside looking in and trying to sell a product. A developer advocate is a target user and actively uses the product or service. And the third pillar is product, which is all about advocating for developers and testers. Because I'm involved in the community and I talk to a lot of people who use K6 or maybe even use other load testing tools, I can take that knowledge and all their criticism or feedback or pain points and I join product cycles within the company, within K6 itself. So I might be kind of like a, a subject matter expert where I say, well, a tester would really be looking for this particular feature. There's so many different kinds of developer advocates. So rather than trying to sum up everything that every developer advocate does, I'm just gonna show you a week in my life so you can see what I do as a developer advocate. I made a video yesterday that I just realized when I woke up needed a better ending. So I've actually put on the same shirt that I had from you know the last bit of yesterday just to have some sort of continuity. So if you're just wanting to see real-time metrics from your load test, then running locally and then outputting it to K6 Cloud is probably a really good idea. And that is my webcam. This is a Canon M50. That is a Sony A6600. And this is the mask that is my desk on a Friday. So I work at K6, which has been acquired by Grafana Labs, and they want to do a webinar um, in September, I believe. What I need to do now is get up to speed on the state of the plugin that we have, its limitations, and I need to be ready to talk about it. It is 4.35 and in 10 minutes I have to hop on and prepare for the weekly live stream, the office hours. And today I'm joined by... 
uh, Pavel Suval. And Pavel is our CTO at K6. I think that went really well. It is now 629. Tomorrow I have um, like this, it's not really a presentation, but I'm talking in a clubhouse group for my friend Naveen Kumar. So I want to be able to use the clubhouse app with my good microphone here. Um, so I need to figure out how to do that. So I need to meet up with Naveen Kumar and figure all that stuff out before tomorrow. It is now 7.20 and someone that I know, a friend of mine, booked a demo with the KSX customer success team. So I'm gonna go jump in on that. And um, you know, it's always nice to have someone that knows the person that you're talking to on the call. So I'm gonna do that. It is now 8.32 on a Friday and I'm just calling it here. I am tired. <laughs> Good morning. It is Saturday. It's actually 11.35, so I just might have missed the cutoff for morning. So right now I want to do some post-publication tasks for the live stream that I shot yesterday, the K6 office hours. So I want to do the thumbnails, the transcription. Um, I want to make sure that it's tagged to the right playlist so that people that are interested in a topic can just go to the playlist instead of combing through all of the videos there. Um, and I just wanna have a feel for my content calendar for the rest of the week and kind of reflect about what I've done in the previous week. It is 12.36 right now, so I'm off until 5 p.m. where I'm supposed to do a talk on realistic load testing in my friend Naveen, Naveen Kumar's uh, clubhouse group. The idea of a load test is to recreate production um, situations or scenarios, right? My first time at Clubhouse, um, it was really good. It's it's uh, 6.20 right now, so we went a little bit over. There were actually a lot of questions and people were really engaged. Um, that is it for me today. Uh, we'll see if I do anything else tomorrow. It is Sunday. It's now 1.58 p.m. So I've been off doing my own thing, playing Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so I haven't been working. This is the first time I'm sitting down to actually work. So today I'm going to do a bunch of writing things. One is I need to answer some questions because Grafana Labs does these team member profiles every week apparently, and they asked me to submit one. Secondly, I need to create some talking points for an audio only um, racket. Racket.com is a fairly new social media network um, that I'd like to explore. And the third thing is a, a blog post um, completely not related to, uh, to performance testing. It's going to be about note taking for D&D. It is 5.16 and I'm calling it for the day. I was supposed to get three things done. I got two of those things done. One of them, um, apparently the team profile involved me like taking a picture of myself and taking a picture of my workspace. And so it took a little bit longer than I had anticipated. So I only started the third thing, the blog post and I didn't fully get it done, but that's okay. I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. So today is an editing day. Slack and email and that kind of thing is just um, really difficult when you have it up all the time and you're constantly being interrupted. So instead what I try to do is I try to block out some days or some time where I can just be like, I don't have to respond to anyone. I can just put my head down and do my work. that robot. It is 3.31 p.m. and I've just finished having lunch. 
Um, I have now edited that first video and I've exported it and uploaded it to YouTube and I had lunch so that by the time that I finished lunch YouTube would be done at least processing the HD version um, and I'm going to send it to a colleague for review. It is 10.42 a.m. Um, I had a good day of editing yesterday, even though I didn't get everything done. I did get a blog post written out. I thought I was done for the day, but then I, I just did a little bit more of work at night. I need to plan and write for two presentations that are coming up. One is a presentation at a conference, that's TestCon Europe, and the second is a Grafana. It's a webinar about Grafana Labs and K6 um, that I'm going to be having in September as well. I need to start preparing so that I don't end up cramming it all in later on. is a quick coffee chat with two of my colleagues. It's funny because I've been at K6 for almost a year now. I think I'm, yeah, I'm at nine months now and I've never actually met anyone physically in person yet. So we have to make do with these water cooler chats and casual channels on our Slack and just basically trying to make up for that interaction that you would have with people in an office. It is Wednesday. Last night I ended up learning really late that a service that I really love called Readwise had released an official plugin for Obsidian, which is a note-taking tool that I use. I say note-taking, but it's really more like my second brain um, or the brain that actually remembers everything. I'd previously written a Python script to connect the two, but you know, it was a little hokey. I'm no developer and I didn't really have time to, to make it look all good and they released an official integration so I'm really excited about that and I was so excited in fact that last night at like 11 p.m. I quickly wrote up a blog post so that's another blog post done and it's on the Readwise integration with Obsidian. Last night I also finished rereading another book, Show Your Work by Austin Kleon. It's something that I've read before. I think this is my third rereading of it. I just really love it because it's a book of self-promotion for those who hate self-promotion. Wednesdays are always a little bit difficult because aside from being hump day in the middle of the week, it's also the day where I have a lot of meetings and they're kind of spaced out throughout the day. So right now I have a meeting at 11, and then at one, and then at three. Wow, that was a lot of meetings. Um, we had a tech talk every other week at K6. Somebody wants, somebody presents something about something technical or some tools that they're using or work that they're doing. But this week it was actually about investing. So. That was kind of cool. I'm starving, I haven't eaten yet. So um, it is now 4.21. I think I'm gonna end today there, at least the work day. See you tomorrow. That's the thing with wearing a gray shirt. You can see my mic right here. That's actually why I wear black all the time. It is Thursday, it's exactly 11 a.m. And today I've blocked out the entire day for filming. So I need to get down and not script, but put out the talking points for each video that I wanna hit. I've also closed off Slack for the day, notifications are off, I'm not gonna get notified. That way I'm not getting interrupted or I don't have to redo a take because Slack was noisy in the background or something. K6 
case it's interesting for other people, this is my setup when I'm filming. I've got, that is the Elgato key light, and that's my main key light, my main light. I've got this Philips Hue um, light in the corner there. Probably isn't seen very much, but I do have a setting to turn it blue when I'm filming, just for a little bit of visual interest. And then for more visual interest over there, like those two are Nanlite Pavo tubes, and that is an Aperture ALMC uh, portable LED light that I've got mounted to like this big light stand. It's actually a really useful, really versatile light, and I'm just using it as a bit of a like a kicker light or a hair light, just so I'm not disappearing into my background. Well, in this video, I'm going to discuss two of the integration options between K6 and Grafana and talk a little bit more about why you would choose each one. Okay, so that was the first video. I finished that one off. It is now 2.08 p.m. so I need to go get lunch and I'm going to come back and film the second video. It's 3.53 so I've finished the two um, the two videos that I wanted to film are done. Now I'm going to get a head start on editing and it's probably time to check in on Slack because I haven't been haven't checked it in a few hours just to make sure nothing urgent has come up. It is 8.49 p.m. on Tuesday, um, Thursday. <laughs> it's been a long week. I just finished a conversation with someone that I thought would be interested in going to office hours and he said yes. So I've scheduled that in for later this month. Because it's Thursday, it is the end of this work week and the life of a developer advocate or whatever I'm calling it. I think even when people understand what a developer advocate is in broad strokes, they're still interested in the nitty gritty, like what exactly do I do every day? And so I hope that this video has been useful in that regard and maybe it'll inspire somebody else to be a developer advocate too. It's an awesome job, very rewarding, changes all the time, and very interdisciplinary. So if you like learning things, Developer Advocate's the way to go.